Hello everyone and welcome to Educers Clinics. I am Dr. Gunjan Desai and today we are going to start a new series on biliary tract cancer. We have already posted some videos on extrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma as it is known as. But we are going to discuss biliary tract cancer and especially the intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma from anatomy to classification to the pathophysiology, to the clinical features and the management. So when we discuss this series, we are going to see the anatomical classification of all the biliary tract cancers so as to clear confusion of what is intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma, what is perihilar cholangiocarcinoma and what is distal cholangiocarcinoma. After this, we are going to see the risk factors and the precursor lesions. We will see how to diagnose these cases and in this series we are going to focus on intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma. So we will look at the clinical presentation imaging as well as the immunohistochemistry and molecular testing. And then we will look at a treatment and the current guidelines as well as algorithms for managing the liver biliary tract cancer, simple terms or the intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma in medical terms. So when it comes to the anatomy, this is from our video only, the biliary tree anatomy. If you have missed this video, do have a look at this video. We have separate series on gallbladder and bile duct anatomy as well as liver anatomy. We have to understand that the division of the common hepatic duct into right and left hepatic duct is the first order bile duct, whereas the second division and beyond it is the second order bile duct. So these two terms are important to understand commonly asked in MCQs also and very important for understanding the classifications intrahepatic, extrahepatic, cholidocalcist, all these will use these terms. So when it comes to bile duct cancers or biliary tract cancers, it is divided into essentially two parts first, intrahepatic and extrahepatic. After the second division is the intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma and these lead to 10 to 20% of all biliary tract cancers. So the incidence is lower. And beyond this, towards the common hepatic duct, all the different cholangiocarcinomas that we see are extrahepatic cholangiocarcinomas or ECCA. Okay, so ICCA, ECCA. And then in extrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma, you have two parts. The perihilar cholangiocarcinoma, which is from second order bile ducts extrahepatically towards the cystic duct insertion. And below the cystic duct insertion to ampulla is the distal cholangiocarcinoma. If you are asked most common biliary tract cancer, it is perihilar cholangiocarcinoma, also known as clad skin cancer, right? So perihilar is the most common, then is distal and then is intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma. So to clear confusion, this presentation is going to be very simple on predominantly the classifications of intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma. So we have already seen the anatomical classification intrahepatic, extrahepatic, PND, perihilar and distal. You also have a morphological classification and then you have a histology based classification. In histology, you have subtypes and you have differentiation based classification. So let us see all of them one by one. When it comes to morphology, Morphology basically means how it looks, right? Morphological classification. The tumor can be mass forming type. So it forms a mass on the scan. You can see a mass. It can be periductal infiltrating type. You will see thickening of a particular duct. That is periductal infiltrating type. Or you can have a combined type that is PI plus MF. Into histological classification, when we say differentiation based, remember histology is biopsy or the specimen study. The differentiation based is common in all other tumors, well differentiated, moderately differentiated, poor differentiated and undifferentiated. Right? Then you have based on glandular features, another histological subtype which is small duct type and large duct type or cholangiocellular type, right? So there can be small duct versus large duct type. Understand that these subtypes are very important in today's times because 
small duct and large duct have been identified to be molecularly different. Their targets are different. Immunotherapy works differently. So a lot of studies are going on in the direction of small duct versus large duct intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma. And then you have uncommon variants or HCC-like cholangiocarcinoma or you can have combined HCC and CC, right? So all these different subtypes are differentiation-based, basically histological classification. Now going into the second part, which is the pathophysiology, the most commonly studied risk factors for ICCA or intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma are Carolis disease, primary sclerosing cholangitis, cirrhosis and choledocal cyst in that order because the odds ratio or the risk of developing ICCA in particular liver diseases is nearly 38 and 22 for Carolis disease and primary sclerosing cholangitis. Other significant risk factors, cirrhosis and choledocal cyst. Then you have other risk factors such as CBD stones, gallstones, chronic hepatitis, BNC, NAFLD, relatively low risk. You have obesity, diabetes, hypertension and chronic pancreatitis, inflammatory bowel disease with extrahepatic conditions. Then liver flukes. ICCA is more common than extrahepatic CCA in liver fluke infection. Alcohol and smoking is a common risk factor for almost all cancers. Thorotrust relative risk for more than 300, but it is not currently used. 1,2 dichloropropane industrial agent asbestosis. Now coming to some precursor lesions in cholangiocarcinoma and you have heard of these terms. So what we are trying to do is thus give you the terminology and the meaning of these terminologies in this presentation. And in the next parts, we will discuss clinical presentation, diagnosis and management. So biliary intraepithelial neoplasia is a pathology finding. You will not see its CT scan reports. It is non-detectable clinically or on imaging. It can be low grade or high grade biliary intraepithelial neoplasia. This is based on atypia and it can be intestinal type versus classical type. Now coming to another entity and we have published the case report on this entity that is intraductal papillary neoplasm of the bile duct. This you can see as a polypoidal growth within the bile duct. It has four subtypes, intestinal, oncocytic, gastric and pancreaticobiliary. Next precursor lesion is intraductal tubulopapillary neoplasm of the bile duct. The short form of this is ITPN. It also has a large in situ intraductal component and this leads to an earlier diagnosis. ITPN is having a better prognosis than IPNB. Last precursor lesion to cholangiocarcinoma is hepatic mucinous cystic neoplasm. Ovarian stroma on pathology is diagnostic of a mucinous cystic neoplasm in liver, almost exclusively seen in women. Now coming to the last slide of this presentation, as I said, the large duct versus small duct disease is now the area of a lot of studies and this is because of the mutations. KRAS and SMAD4 in large duct type versus IDH1 and FGFR2 in small duct type. Remember that IDH and FGFR are targets for targeted therapy. And that is why small duct type has better prognosis than large duct type. So this is something that you need to remember. Risk factors for large duct type are primary sclerosing, cholangitis, hepatolithiasis and liver flukes. Whereas for small duct type is more commonly non-biliary cirrhosis, which can be due to viral hepatitis or MASLD. Precursor lesions are more common in large duct type and it, it will have a periductal infiltrating component. So large duct thickening will be seen and then only it is a large duct type. Mass may or may not be present. Whereas small duct will not have ductal thickening. So PI component is not there in small duct type. LVI and PNI that is lymphovascular invasion and perineural invasion is more common in large duct type. Prognosis is bad. 
prognosis is good for small drug type because it has actionable targets in therapy. So in the next part of this video, we will go towards the clinical presentation of ICCA, then go towards the diagnosis and then management in rejectable as well as locally advanced cases. Thank you.